Today, the title of my talk is The Message and the Messenger. On this May Vision event, I would like to talk on this topic. We are in the most difficult and devastating period of human history when COVID-19 has taken many lives. When one of my friends lost her husband 15 days back to this horrible virus, initially she started to doubt if God is all loving, if God is all powerful, why all these? But later God gave her the strength and she spoke boldly with hope in one of her forum about her loss. I believe that the statement, I doubt it, is not wrong. Many times such doubts can increase our faith on the one to whom it must belong as we honestly explore the question still further. God does not get angry by doubts, even when they sprang from those who had walked closely with him. Take the case of Apostle Thomas. He was the one who was uh, walking closely with Jesus for more than three years. He was the one to whom Jesus gave the poignant statement, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When Jesus came forth to life after his death, he appeared to his disciples, but Thomas was not ready to believe it. He said, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand onto his side, I will never believe. The Bible says in John 20 that eight days later, when the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and looked at Thomas and said, Put your finger here, see my hands, put out your hand and place it on my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. You know, Thomas answered, my Lord, my God, oh, Theo's mouth, oh, Theo's mouth. That incident changed his life. That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, that the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ is the fulcrum of the Christian faith. After this first-hand experience of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Thomas packed his bags. He started a long journey towards the east through the Mediterranean Sea via the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea. He came to India. All along the way, he shared the message of Jesus Christ with everyone who crossed his path with the rugged highlanders who lived in the mountains between the Tigris and the Euphrates River. He also ministered in the courts of King Gundapuris, ruler of most of modern Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Finally, he reached the shores of Kerala in Western India in 52 AD, preached along the Mal Malabar coast and across the Deccan Plateau for nearly two decades. They say his talks were very popular. People flocked to listen to him. Thomas preached the gospel, built churches, fed the hungry, cared for widows and orphans. He healed the sick and demon possessed. And finally, he was feared to death in Mailapur, which is situated now within the metropolitan city of Chennai. A small group of people who followed the message of Christ that time are called Thomas Christians. Clearly, the man once known as Doubting Thomas no longer had doubts as he preached the gospel to entire kingdoms and ultimately paid with his life. Later, around 1500s, when the Portuguese first came to India, they decided to rebuild St. Thomas Cathedral Basilica Chennai over the tomb of St. Thomas. Uh, they did it in their own style, and that's how we got this beautiful new Gothic cathedral, which we now know today as the Santa Basilica. Do you know that there are only three churches in the world that, there are, that they are built over the remains of an apostle of Jesus Christ? St. Peter's in the Vatican, St. James in Spain, and St. Thomas in Chennai, India. So Jesus loves India so much, he sent one of his disciples to India. After Thomas' ministry in India, missionaries continued coming overseas like the Jesuits, uh, like uh, St. Francis of Assisi and Chancobar missionaries like Bartholomew, Zig and Bal. 
They toiled to spread the love of Jesus. They valued Indian culture, Indian ethnicity. Their hearts went out to the people of India. They chose to live like fellow natives. They provided the natives with clothing, medicines, education, machinery, taught them to thrive with their skills and assets. They opened schools, hospitals, colleges, and even helped in abolishing even practices like sati, Devadasi movement, infanticide, the killing of lepers, child sacrifice, and many others. The Portuguese, British, and French traders felt threatened to see the native Indians uplifted by the work of Indian of these missionaries. And eventually the missionaries even faced persecution, imprisonment, and were even exiled from their own by their own people in a foreign land. Many high quality colleges, schools, buildings stand to this day as testaments to their works. The field of medicine is a great area where Christians have made a great contribution. In the 19th century, uh, medical establishments of various kinds were created throughout India, among which two have been internationally recognized. The first, the Christian Medical College Hospital Ludhiana, that was founded by Dr. Edith Brown in 1893. The other, the Christian Medical College Hospital Vellore, that grew out of it, Dr. Ida Skadar um, from her roadside clinics that began in 1895. Numerous homes throughout India were also established but abandoned, the abused, the exploited. Two of the most impressive of these centers are the Mukti Mission in uh, Kedagavan near Pune, founded by Pandit Ramabha in 1898 for orphan girls and abused women. The other is the Donawood Fellowship that was first organized in 1901 by Amy Karmakail in South India. The main reason is to rescue girls who have been forced into temple prostitution. You know, these messengers helped in transforming lives because the message of Jesus Christ was carried by them. That message is unique. The message of Jesus Christ gives hope. It's radical. It has a power to transform life. It has the extraordinary ability to answer the deep questions of life. Jesus told about his messengers that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt just constitutes a small portion in a big plate. That is why the messengers of Jesus Christ are just few in numbers. Hence, we should never ask the question why we are only 2.5%. But we should ask the question why we have not influenced the society and transformed them as Jesus wants them to be. Though the message is powerful, somewhere we have missed out and betrayed the trust Jesus entrusted to us. When we are preparing ourselves to celebrate Jesus on our land on July 3rd, the Indian Christian Day, let us celebrate by sharing, caring and loving our neighbors. Let us celebrate by looking into ourselves. Are we the salt yeah. and light of the world? Yeah. This is a much needed celebration to yeah. celebrate the message of Christ and the beautiful feet of the messengers of Christ and the years we have grown thus far. It's a day to think how are we helping our fellow human beings as a good Samaritan, Jesus portrayed. It's a day to ponder Mm. our lives. It's a celebration that brings hope. Thank you. Yeah.